Hey everybody, Techie101 here, and um, this is gonna be a total fanboy video. Like, I'm not even gonna try to hide that. I'm not gonna make this seem more grandiose than it is. Uh, but uh, I got something in the mail the other day. It was not fan mail, it was something that uh, I ordered myself. And if you saw my Twitter, you already know what they are. Uh, in fact, you probably already know what they are because I'm gonna title and, you know, put the thumbnail in the video. But, um,. Does anyone remember the show Jackie Chan Adventures from, I think it first aired on the Kids WB back in like, I think actually the year 2000, 2001, that's when it started, and I think it ran up till 2005, it had five seasons. Uh, near the end of its life, I think it started to run on Cartoon Network, uh, but yeah, it had five seasons, and the premise of the show was that Jackie Chan... Like, the, the action hero, Jackie Chan, I think we've all seen at least one Jackie Chan movie in our lives. Um, you know, he was a globe-trotting archaeologist in the spirit of kind of Indiana Jones. Uh, and he would travel the world with his uh, uh, niece, Jade, who was this uh, Chinese girl that was very, uh, she, she was the one that was like hip with the youth and everything like that. She was the one that you were supposed to identify with as, as a kid growing up, you know. And then there was also his uncle, which was, like, this eccentric old man that knew all this stuff about, like, ancient, like, Chinese magic and everything. And they would fight against uh, an evil criminal organization called the Dark Hand. You know, when I think back on it now, because it has been years and years and years since I've uh, watched an episode of Jackie Chan Adventures. It's been a very long time. Uh, but looking back on it now, that premise is kind of out there. Like, it seems like something you would just throw together at the last minute or whatever. Well, anyway, um, five seasons of the show. Now, I only really watched the first uh, four. I didn't really watch the last season at all. Um, in, in, I really basically started to feel like the seasons began to repeat themselves, like in terms of the premise. Like the first two seasons were really good, but then season three kind of repeated season one. And then season four was cool, but then season five just repeated season two. And then by that time, it was like I was getting older and I just stopped watching cartoons. But the first season of Jackie Chan Adventures, uh, they were going around the world trying to gather 12 magical talismans. Uh, based on the Chinese Zodiac. And the reason they were trying to get these things is because there was an evil dragon god named Shen Du that was trapped as a statue, and uh, he made these talismans, and if he got all 12, he would be resurrected as this evil dragon god and try to, like, I think, burn out all of Asia or something like that. Ver something very specific with the prophecy, you know? Never, like, I, I don't think it was take over the world. I think it was, like, specifically destroy just the continent of Asia. So if you're on, if you're on the border there between Asia and Europe, you're good, you know? You should be okay. Um, but anyway... I, I always wanted the talismans growing up. I was a little kid, and I was watching the show, and I'm like, I want these things. And you know what? Looking back now, I don't think they were ever sold as toys. Maybe they were, but I don't know. I would go into Walmart all the time with my dad to buy Power Rangers shit. Like, I can't tell you how many, you know, uh, Morphers and, and Megazords that I you know, kind of made my parents buy me over the years, and, and a plethora of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and all that stuff. Um, so I was in I was in toy stores quite often as a kid, and I don't remember ever seeing any kind of Jackie Chan talismans. You'd think they would be rather simple to make, just pieces of plastic in, in, in an octagon shape that have, like, a little symbol of an animal there. You'd think that that would be rather simple, but I never remember seeing any of them, you know, uh, in stores. I think a few years after that, I started looking them up on Amazon to see if they, they, they sold anything like that. Couldn't find anything. And uh, it wasn't until recently, though, that I got interested again, and I went and uh, I was doing a live stream, and I brought this whole thing up. And people were like, you know, you could probably go and buy those talismans on, like, Etsy or something. And I'm like, Etsy! Oh, my God, I completely forgot about Etsy. Etsy is one of the best inventions of mankind. Kind. You know, it's a great, great place, Etsy. So I go on Etsy, and lo and behold, there's a user named uh, DeadFX. I would recommend you go check out his Etsy store. There's a link in the description below. He does a lot of other stuff beyond just the Jackie Chan stuff. He also did uh, a lot of, I think, Overwatch stuff um, and, like, replicas of things from, like, Legends of the Hidden Temple, that old uh, show, that game show on Nickelodeon, remember, with Olmec? You know, Olmec, where do I go? Yeah, so huge, huge blast from the past there. But I ended up getting my hand on all 12 Jackie Chan talismans, and we're gonna go through them today to, to live out my childhood dream. This is just a, this is just the box for like my old webcam, but uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy, you know, like, uh, what is that? Probably like, probably close to 15 years, probably over 15 years in the making, but I finally got the GD and talismans. Um, so, 
basically each of the talismans is based off a Chinese zodiac animal, and each talisman has a unique special ability, like a superpower that it grants its user. And these are used throughout the whole Jackie Chan series. And I really like the concept because this was like the first uh, time that I think I really got interested in the concept of like a mythology aspect in, an, in a show, in a cartoon nonetheless. Uh, because the Chinese Zodiac is a real thing. It's not like they made it up. It's like this is an actual thing. So it definitely got me interested in that. I know there's pro there was probably references to the Chinese Zodiac in like, like Pokemon and like other kinds of like shows I watched back then. But it was like explicitly stated in, in Jackie Chan Adventures like this is, you know, about Chinese mythology. Chinese culture that's what the basis was because Jackie Chan is Chinese um, but anyway yeah so let's let's go through each one of the talismans and I think I think I can still remember the order in which they were captured the order in which they were revealed in the story once again I have not watched the show in years like literally probably close to de a decade or, or more um, since I've watched this show but um, I, I, do, I do remember liking it and I, I pretty sure I know the order of these so if I'm wrong correct me on this but we'll go through them and also I have a little uh, little side webcam here so I can actually show them to you in, in greater detail here so the first one that's discovered is the rooster and uh, the rooster is actually my sign I was actually I was born in 1993 so I was born in the year of the rooster so you can see they're really simple like you know uh, pieces of you know uh, resin essentially it's it's not that complicated to make these things I mean granted I couldn't do it but you think like a toy manufacturer would be able to create these things and sell them in stores um, it, it's just like a, a, a hard resin um, they are pretty solid so they're not as fragile I wouldn't recommend you know being too rough with them but yeah they're pretty uh, they're pretty solid and uh, the designs on the front are all hand painted so this is the rooster. Now the rooster uh, gave the ability of levitation in the story, uh, and and also a little bit of like telekinesis, allowing you to like lift things with your mind, you know, basically. Um, and I always the way I always imagined that as a kid was, oh well, chickens and and you know they can't fly very well. They can kind of flutter their wings and they can kind of get a little bit off the ground and they can kind of glide, but they can't actually fly. So that's the way I always why I figured that the rooster was levitation because you just flap really hard. It's like I'm levitating, not actually flying, but I'm levitating. Later on, um, the, the dragon god Shen Du, spoiler alert for a 15-year-old show, uh, combines talismans together and does eventually manage to be able to straight up fly by com combining the rooster talisman and the rabbit talisman together. So uh, that is possible, but just on its own, it, lives, it gives you the ability of levitation, which is a pretty handy you know, thing to have, I would imagine, and is to lift things with like your mind and stuff like that. So that was, that was the rooster. The next one is the ox, I think. And the ox is one of the simpler ones. Uh, it just gives you the ability of super strength. So you have the uh, you have the ox talisman, and just you know, you, it kind of. I think it. If I remember this correctly, it changes throughout the story. Where out sometimes when you have the ox talisman, it just doesn't change your physical body, but it just you know you're just stronger. Um, and I think other times, I think when Jade used it one time, she actually got like super buff. So I don't know. It just whatever. It's a cartoon. Whatever. Um, this was wielded by a like a Mexican luchadore, uh, El Toro Fuerte. I think his name was. It's weird. I haven't watched the show in so long, and yet I can remember it so damn well. It's a big part of my childhood. Uh, and he was like this uh, Mexican luchador, like masked wrestler dude. And uh, he had the talisman on his mask, and that's what made him so strong. So uh, that, that's the ox talisman there. Next we have the snake. The snake uh, grants the ability of invisibility. So uh, pretty cool. If I remember, uh, this was wielded by a, uh, like a secret agent sexy, like a Laura Croft kind of uh, character named, I think her name was like Viper or something. And, you know, she was in, like, New York City, and, like, you, she would use the invisibility of the snake to go around and, like, steal things from, like, museums and stuff, okay? So that's pretty cool. I don't remember if the talisman becomes invisible with you, because that would be rather, that'd be rather stupid if he's like, I have the power of invisibility, and you disappear, but the talisman is just kind of floating in the air. That would be kind of stupid. But, um, I can't remember. It probably disappears along with you. So, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the snake invisibility. Next, we have the sheep. And the sheep was a cool one because a lot of these talismans, they give you like kind of basic superhero abilities like super strength, super speed, levitation. The sheep gives you astral projection. Now, 
put you, put yourself in the mindset of like your seven year old self, okay? Do you know what the fuck astral projection means? You know, you probably don't really understand that concept that young, okay? Uh, but anyway, this, so this is where I learned it from, okay? So the power of the sheep allows you to separate your soul from your physical body. So your soul can leave your body and you can travel around and you can phase through walls and structures and things like that. But, you know, that sounds cool and everything. Now, you can't interact with anything while you're in soul form. You can't talk to anybody. No one will be able to see you or anything. You're basically a ghost outside of your body. Um, but uh, the downside of that is that your real body is like this soulless husk that can then be taken over and possessed by evil spirits, and I think that's what happened in the show. The sheep uh, doesn't get to be used all that often because it's, it's not a very practical superpower, you know? Like, super strength! Ugh! Super speed! I, you can't catch me! Um, astral projection! You know, and then you have your soul. I mean, it's really cool for, like, reconnaissance, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's probably how they used it a few times when it was used. But, um, yeah, the sheep was pretty neat. Taught me that concept there. After the sheep, I believe, was the, um, the rabbit, right? Yeah, the rabbit gives you super speed. Pretty obvious, also a very uh, simple kind of superpower. And if you combine the rooster with the rabbit, you get, uh, c you're capable of flight at that point because you can levitate and you can also, you know, move really fast. So that was pretty neat there. I don't think there was a lot of examples of them combining talismans together, like in the show. Like, I know Shen Du did it because Shen Du was the one that made them. And that was, like, all, like, like they were all, like, different fragments of his power. Um, which is weird, because later on in the story, you get other demons. Like, there's more demons than just Shen Du. There was, like, a frog demon, and there was, like, a demon that lived on the moon, and there was, like, a, a thunder demon and shit. And all those demons didn't have, like, magical talismans. Shen Du decided, I'm gonna break my power up into 12 different fragments just for the lulls. But whatever. Anyway, yeah. So he, he combined them every now and then, but you d I don't think we really saw the main cast do it all too often. But yeah, the rabbit gives you super speed. Uh, after the rabbit, I think, was the dragon. The dragon is obviously the coolest. Uh, the power of combustion, or uh, it allows you to breathe fireballs, basically. So, you know, like, you bust... I mean, this came out before Naruto, keep in mind as well. But if it was after Naruto, everyone would just be like, you know, you have the dragon talisman, like, fireball jutsu! <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so that was pretty neat. Um, yeah, dragon, pretty cool. Now, um, next was the, was it the rat that was after the dragon? I think it was the rat or the horse. Uh, the rat. Now, the rat also was an ability that, uh, was not something standard, okay? Um, the rat gives motion to the motionless. Uh, it, it allows an inanimate object to, uh, become alive and feel, like, emotions and things. So, the way they used this a few times in the story, I think it was first used on, like, a toy that uh, Jade had. It was, like, a toy gnome or a troll or something, and it was, like, the bad guy of whatever series that it was from. And so, um, you know, I think she put the rat talisman into it, and then it became, it took on the actual appearance. So, if I had, like, uh, 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 you know, my, um, up here, I have, like, my lapis lazuli pop figurine from Steven Universe, if I took the rat talisman and you know, gave, you know, motion, gave life to Lapis, Lapis would behave in the same way that she behaves in the show. Like, the appearance uh, takes on, like, the meaning of the symbol or something like that. You know, like, that that's what would happen. So, uh, that, that's the situation with the rat. Once again, the rat is not used very often in the story, because uh, it's only, like, certain things can be applicable to it. Um, but Shen Du is, like, with, without the rat's ability, is basically like an inanimate statue. So he needs the rat's ability to become, like, an actual living, breathing dragon again. So uh, the rat was cool, despite not being used all that often. Uh, what's next? I bumped my camera. Uh, the horse, I think, is next. And the horse uh, is uh, healing abilities. H healthy as a horse, you get it? So pretty simple there. Uh, you get uh, an injury. I don't. It, it, now keep in mind, it was a cartoon, and I think it was intended for like a TV Y7 kind of demographic. So I don't think uh, I don't think they could have like Jackie Chan's arm get ripped off or something. Like, oh my God! I, okay, I'm good. We're good. Just it healed. We're fine. Um, but yeah, the horse was pretty useful. You know, as you can imagine, broken bones or things like that would heal instantly with the horse's ability. Um, I remember one episode, and I think this would be in season three. See, in season one, they were going around globetrotting, trying to find all of the talismans. 
and then in season three the talismans get destroyed once again spoilers for like a 15 year old show um the talismans get destroyed but the magic power is still in them and it just kind of goes and it moves into the actual animals so when the horse talisman gets destroyed it actually migrates into an actual horse somewhere in the world then they have to go all over the world and find the animals now so you see how they're kind of like repeating the plot and um I think one of the one of the villains of the show was like turned into a child by a like a magic spell and he tried to use the horse talisman to heal him and turn him back into a normal adult but it didn't work. So it's only uh it's only uh like physical wounds that it can actually heal. Can it heal mental damage? <laughs> I don't know, probably not. The horse isn't ma the horse is magic, but there's limits, guys. All right, next is I think the monkey the funky monkey. The monkey is cool. The monkey allows uh, shape-shifting, but only into animals. So you can't use the monkey to, like, you know, grab a, a rock and be like, It's a bazooka! <laughs> you know? Um, once again, TVY7 probably gonna make sure to limit the use of weapons as much as possible, like conventional weapons. Um, but I think there was, like, electric swords, if I'm remembering this. If you haven't watched this cartoon, you're right now, you're like, wait, wait, okay. Jackie Chan is Indiana Jones with his, uh, you know, niece with, uh, magical powers and, uh, uh, monkeys that could turn things into animals and you have electric swords and dragon gods. Like, what is this show? Like, go watch it. Seriously, it's good. At least up until, like, season two. Um, so you can transform yourself into anything. So I could pick up the monkey talisman and I could be like, well, monkey, and I could turn into an actual monkey or a gorilla or anything. Well, that, that would be the same basic. Shark! I want to be a shark! Probably not in this room, but I, I would want to be a shark. That'd be cool. Or, or a hawk or something. Bird of prey. You know, yeah. An owl. I like owls. Um, and you can also turn things into, into animals as well. So I could pick up like this uh, remote and I could be like, you are now a badger. And it would turn into a badger and then would probably maul me because, you know, it's a badger. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty cool there. The monkey talisman. Uh, what's next is the dog, I think. Yeah, the dog. The dog is kind of OP. Uh, guess what the dog is? If you haven't watched the show, you don't know. Um, the dog is, uh, immortality. <laughs> yeah, there's a straight-up immortality talisman, because D Shendu is a dragon god. He's, like, divine, so he would be immortal. Once again, why would you break that up? Why would you be like, you know what, I feel like breaking up my body. I'm gonna take one of the strongest aspects of me, not not just my self-healing abilities and my immortality. I'm gonna break those into two separate things, and if they ever get loose, yeah, no. Um, well, I, I don't know, because this is sounding really, like, Shindu would be a, such a dumbass to do that. I'm starting to question if I'm remembering this correctly. Like, did he actually split them up himself, or did, like, someone else come in and, like, divide him up into 12? Because that seems way more likely than him you know, purposely dividing his abilities for no goddamn reason. Um, but yeah, the dog gives you immortality, and in the episode, uh, Uncle, uh, who's uh, Jackie's uncle, is like an older dude, and he's kind of like feeling like he can't move around too well, but after they find the dog talisman, they, they also gives him like revigorated youth. It doesn't actually make him physically younger, but it, it, it gives him like, you know, re revitalizes him, essentially. It allows him to move around like he would be when he was like in his 20s. So it, it grants youth and uh, immortality to the user. And, 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 like, that immortality thing is straight up. Like, I think there was a time when Jackie had this, and he gets literally lit on fire. Like, Shendu has him dead to rights and just lights him up with the dragon talisman, and he just, like, gets burnt alive, and the episode ends. And in the next episode, it's like, oh, you have the dog talisman, you're fine! <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, so straight up immortality. Um, yeah. Now, uh, moving on to the pig, or the boar, depending on which, you know, context you're looking at this. The boar is the weird one. All right, because try to guess what the pig is. Try to guess. Because the dog, you know, immortality, whatever, but that's it at least. Uh, these are all mystical abilities, you know, mystical powers. You know, the power of invisibility, the power of super strength, levitation, super, sp super speed. You know, mankind has been dreaming of these kind of uh, supernatural abilities since time immemorial. You know, it doesn't take, you know, our modern society. Like, you could have a human that lived 10,000 years ago that would be like, man, it would be really cool to have super strength, you know? It'd be, like, really cool to be able to lift things up above my head that were, like, several tons, you know? That'd be cool, right? Um, but the pig gives you laser beam eyes. 
that was just for I think to look to make the cartoon look cool. Like just straight up, just I don't know what it has got. Like, do pigs have really good eyesight? I don't fucking know. Um, I think it also gave you like thermal vision. Like it gave you like uh, infrared. Like you could see the the light spectrum. You know, so you could see like maybe X-ray vision as well. I'm not really remembering this correctly, but um, yeah, the main primary you know offensive ability. I maybe they thought there needed to be more offensive abilities in the talisman, so they're just like, yeah, the pig just. Just give them laser beam eyes, so that's cool. So that that's neat there. So uh, next is the last talisman, and it's the last one. And I know this was the last one that was revealed, and this is the tiger. Okay, now the tiger is another weird one. So the tiger gives you balance, but not in the sense of what you think. Not like balance in the sense of like perfect balance, like, oh no. And I think that was like a running gag in the story once where they're like, the tiger, you will be unable to knock me down. And then just gets floored and just gets knocked down. So, when the tiger is activated, it splits in half. You can kind of tell that there's a line running t through them there. So, when activated, it splits into two equal parts, the yin half and the yang half. And Jackie uses it the first time, and it splits him into, like, a, a light Jackie Chan and a dark Jackie Chan. The light Jackie Chan is, for all intents and purposes, a complete pussy, essentially. Like, oh my god, I don't like to fight! And the dark one is, of course, he busts out the freaking dark leather jacket, because all bad people, every evil person needs to have a dark leather jacket, right? And the shades, and the shades, it has to be that. And, um, I think that's actually how, uh how Shendu revives is because the the uh the dark Jackie Chan, the Yang Jackie Chan, uh steals all the other talismans and then gives them over to Shendu. I think that's how that happened. So yeah, not a lot of applications for actual battle. Um I don't even really think a lot of good applications for really anything because at least when with the uh with the rat, you could say, "Okay, you know, it would be cool to communicate with a fictional character every now and then, you know." And and uh, by the way, in the this is this would be the most valuable thing ever to an anime fan, to an otaku or a weeb or anybody. Think about it. You buy like a Nami figurine and then you put this on it and yeah, so this would be the most valuable. Like if this thing actually existed, I could probably sell this for no less than 50 billion dollars. <laughs> okay, like it's like there would be some crazy people out there that would want to talk to some fictional characters and probably do some other things with fictional characters. Um, you know, the sheep um, the sheep is, you know, it's not very applicable in combat, but you could use it for reconnaissance. I mean, you just have to be kind of wary of evil spirits and all that. Maybe draw, like, a salt circle around you before you use your astral projection shit. Um, but then maybe that would trap your ghost as well. I don't know. I've been watching a lot of Supernatural lately. Um, so, you know, but when it comes to the tiger, it's like, what could you possibly use this for? You can't even use it, like, you might be thinking, like, oh, well, you can clone yourself. Um, and, and, I, and I don't think it's like the clones like have half your powers or anything like that. They're, they're t the, both of them are the real you, just different sides of your personality, just different sides of your spirit, you know, the yin half and the yang half. But you wouldn't really be able to like cooperate too easily. I think Jackie eventually got both of his halves to cooperate together. But uh, aside from that, like it, at first though, they were like at complete odds with each other, you know, so that not a very applicable uh, talisman to use in, in, in really any instance there. Probably just stay away from the tiger. But, um, yeah, those are all of the talismans. I'm probably going to incorporate these into a video at some point, I, I would imagine. Um, I don't know how. Uh, if you want me to talk about Jackie Chan Adventures, I could go and watch the show again and maybe do, like, vlogs of them. Maybe not, like, of each episode, but, like, I'll watch the season and go back and, like, revisit to see how it is. Um, you know, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, first season was Talisman, second season was the Demons, third season was the Talismans again, just in animal form. The fourth season was cool because that took it from Japanese mythology, and that was like those Oni masks, but I don't think that panned out as much as it should have. And then the fifth season was just the Demons again. So, yeah, and then that, that was it. But, uh, hey, yeah, let me know what you thought about this. If anybody remembers this show, I, I remember it was a great show. I watched it all the time for a few years. Uh, when I was a little kid. I, and uh, one more story before I go, because this is something I just I just remembered. So, when this show was out in, like, 2000, and probably, like, the height of its popularity, 2003, you know, something like that, um, 
and and, and it, I know it aired on the kids WB, but it also aired on like uh, Cartoon Network, and it was like different because like the like it could be season three on on the uh, WB, but it would only be like season one still on Cartoon Network, so it's like different. But I remember being in middle school. I remember being in sixth grade, so this would have been this would have had to have been at least uh, fall two thousand three, early two thousand four when I was in sixth grade. And uh, we were in social studies class one day, and our teacher was a guy by the name of Mr. Trano. And uh, he was uh, trying to make the lesson a little bit more exciting for us. So during the lesson, he asked this, the, the class, he's like, now name a, name a famous archaeologist. And I know ho who you're all thinking of right out of the gate, you know, basically. And Mr. Trano, you know, he's an older guy, so he thought... You know, Indiana Jones. He thought Indiana Jones was the quintessential archaeologist character in fiction. I had no idea who Indiana Jones was at in, in 2003, 2004. When I was like 10 years old, I had no idea who he was. Um, I never saw any of those movies. Um, I've still only seen uh, Raiders. I've never seen Temple of Doom or... Uh, or Last Crusade. I'm sorry. Oh, but I did see the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Does that count? But anyway, I guess Mr. Trano was expecting our whole class to like raise their hands and be like, you know, Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, you know, Harrison Ford. But um, no, instead, like seven or eight kids did raise their hands and he called on one of them and, and he was like, Jackie Chan? And Mr. Trano, I swear to God, because this was not the first class he had that day. Like, he had a few before that, and he asked the same question. And he's like, "No, why do you people keep thinking Jackie Chan is an archaeologist? Because he probably knows Jackie Chan from, like, the action movies and all that shit, you know? Like, he doesn't think, he's like, why do you, did Jackie Chan play an archaeologist? I don't remember this. And we had to explain, it's like, there's a cartoon called Jackie Chan Adventures. Like, Really? Really, that's the famous archaeologist right now. So that that I we all laughed. I remember that was a lot of fun. But um, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for indulging my uh, fanboy attitude today. Uh, check out Dead FX on Etsy if you want some of these for yourself, or you want some other cool stuff that he's done. I'm gonna get going, guys. Uh, you guys, uh, you have a good. Um, yeah, you have a, a real, real good day. Yeah, you have a good day, everybody. Signing out.